Okay, so principal hat off, mommy hat on. So this is one mommy with quite a lot of experience as in the educator's um, point of view and a little bit of experience of being a mom, <laughs> just like five and a half years of being a mom. So not too long. The, what I would like to share with you, the, a, a little part of my history, ties in quite significantly to what we are dealing with right now. And then I would like to share a little bit of ideas with you that you can do with your children if you see that they are not coping. So some of you might not know, but when my son Costa, who now is five, uh, when he was two years old, he... Um, contracted a virus which then led his body to attack the nervous system instead of the virus so it's called transverse myelitis and my son went from playing soccer and running around at school to completely paralyzed from the head to his toes in a matter of three days the reason why it, it ties in nicely with what we are dealing with now is because when he was two, well, when he was diagnosed with this, um, I think on day three in hospital, we were told that he was either going to stay vegetable for the rest of his life or we should start saying our goodbyes. It is honestly by the true grace of God and that my son is walking. So he really took this test and turned it into a testimony and i can honestly say to you now that my son is perfectly healthy and a very normal child i know what it's like to worry about your child's safety i know very well what it's like to worry about them getting sick while he was when he was admitted into hospital costa's immune system was shut down completely so he was in a self-quarantine he was self-isolated in, in the ped ward and very limited amount of people were allowed to come in when they came in we had to sterilize our hands it was very similar to the situation <laughs> um, we had to sterilize everything we couldn't allow uh, people to touch him or it and it, just for me to kiss him i made sure i was so paranoid i made sure i sterilized my face and and brushed my teeth I want to stress with you as well that not only do we want, do we expect our children to wash our hands for 20 seconds at school and after they cough and whatever, but oral hygiene is equally important in this, in this situation as well with this pandemic and with this virus going around. Uh, for my little ones, if you don't have a little, if, for my nurseries, and in teacher Nadia's class by now, you should kind of have your little toothbrush. If you don't have a little toothbrush yet, um, my midwife once taught me, and we used it since since the moment Costa was born. You take a piece of gauze, you know those gauze squares, you buy them at Diskim, like a big pack like this for 20 rand or something, and you put it around your, your pinky, and you put it under like warm water. And then you just do that on their gums, just to clean their gums and then up on the palate and around the gums in circular motions. This also actually helps with language development and the formation of the muscles. It, it like opens up the muscle all over, even on inside of the cheek. So that's a that's an easy, cute little tip that um, I can give you if, in, if you didn't know that already. With Costa's situation, we were still not allowed to go to school. Um, this was around about August. And then we were told we, we could only go back to school in January. You might think that a two-year-old or, you know, your, your little one's still small. He's not going to go to big school anytime soon. Friends are not that important. I can vouch for the fact that friends, even at two years old, are so important. The, the reason why I'm telling you this story is because already at the age of two, we might not think it because we might think, oh, they're still so small. They're babies. I promise you already at that age, their bonds of friendship are so strong. His best friend at the age of two years old was Luke. To this day, his best friend is Luke. This, the friendship that I have witnessed in my own child as a mother has been beautiful. And 
I then, before I'd made the decision to take him back, because again, paranoid mom, now I'm scared my, I've, I've almost lost my son and I don't want to do, I don't want to take any risks. And this is the situation that a lot of moms and parents are in now. Like, do we take the risk of sending our child back to school? And that is a decision only you can make. But please know that whatever you make, whatever decision you make, we are behind you 100%. Whether you, want, whether you choose to stay at home or whether you choose to t uh, bring them back to school, whichever one you choose, that is your right to choose that as their parent because you know what's best. The reason why I'm telling you my story is because I don't want you to take for granted what they get in that situation. My son was borderline depressed and when I had to keep him home, but I had to, there was no choice. And just like right now, we don't have a choice. We don't have one. And when I started slowly taking him back to school with the doctor's permission, slowly, slowly, just a few hours a day, how blessed we are as a school to have the children that we have. I cannot, I'll be here forever. The little ones at two years old in his classroom were so loving, so careful with him that they, they, would, they, were, like, they were worse than the teachers. They were worse than me. But yet, instead of holding him back, they would encourage him and egg him on and you can do it. And they would push him to use his muscles. That is how amazing kids are. They are amazing. So yes, this situation is hard. Quarantine is hard. It's been difficult. Put kids together in a classroom and watch what happens. I am so excited to see. I promise you it is, it's, it's something amazing. You should never underestimate them. And I want to instill the importance of what a friendship is. Even at the age of two years old. How children behave at home is very different to how children behave at school. They want to perform better at school. Not because you're not there and they don't love you. They love you. But they don't have to try with you. Because you're going to love them no matter what. <laughs> they don't have to push. In, a, in, a, in that situation, they want to show their friends. And in our situation with our amazing kids... Our kids egg each other on. They push each other. Um, now from a therapist, a therapist parent point of view, when I was in quarantine with my son, he was very weird with me. He didn't want to hug me. He couldn't really explain to me his emotions. But yet when daddy walked through the door, oh, different child, brightened up. I spoke to therapists about it. I took play therapy courses. I was adamant. I, I made it my mission in life to understand the psyche of a child from birth. I want to impart a little bit and help you help your little ones. Because right now I can't. I would love to pick them up, squeeze them and kiss them as much as I possibly can. But I can't. Um, and when I do, it will be through a mask. So... <laughs> fun times coming <laughs> so what I want you to watch out for when a child is exhibiting signs of fear anxiety um, or even depression there are many signs that you can look out for they loss of appetite now it's winter they want to eat in winter so if you see a lack of, of um, a bit, but a, I'm talking about like a severe amount of appetite um, suppression like uh, for right now they're not as active as they would be at, at school so your body isn't using as much as much energy they don't need to intake as they're not going to be as hungry but if you see like a significant difference like they had breakfast skipped lunch and had no snacks and they're still picking at their food at, at dinner significant amount of uh, lack of appetite then that is, that is a sign. Not just like I don't feel like eating right now. Like we all have those moments. Um, not really. But anyway, I'd like to pretend I do. <laughs> so if you see that they are tired a lot, very fatigued, that they want to, that you know, they don't really, and there's no fever, there's no sign of cough. Um, 
there's you know no sign that they are sick but they are tired a lot another sign is the complete opposite which is anger a lot of angry bursts and moving and bashing and like even like when they're drawing they will even break the paper it's so bad or they draw they draw dark things or they draw like a lot of like red ugly faces or they draw black ugly faces um let me tell you the answer is not to take away the color black a lot of schools do that please don't do that don't take away the color black just because they're coloring in with black they're coloring in with black or they're going crazy with black or crazy with red for a reason and you let them follow through with that okay one of the one of the, the the biggest tip i can give to you and this applies from birth till they are in their teens um, and maybe afterwards i don't know i didn't study past the teens <laughs> i don't know but maybe afterwards who knows from the minute a little one is developing inside the womb they their hands are their play toys maybe some maybe some moms saw in the sonogram maybe they saw sucking the thumb or even hand by the mouth from the time they are in the womb developing they have discovered that there's something here that i can that i can suck on and that has given them comfort already in the womb which is why babies when they are born if there's no dummy if there's no what a lot of them put their thumb in the mouth obviously we would like to discourage that afterwards because it completely distorts their teeth and jaw but um, in the beginning they enjoy putting their thumb in their mouth and it's so cute and we ooh and ah and we take so many photos when you need your child to feel comfort maybe they f are blaming you for what's happening maybe inside their head they are angry and they think that it's your fault that they can't go to school it's your fault that they can't see their friends and it's your fault that they are stuck inside this house and they can't go to restaurants and play areas and whatever whatever so same thing happened with me costa at two thought it was my fault that he had undergone all this stuff and so if you find your little one is acting different one of the first things you can do is hold their hands the first thing they they discover is theirs so when you hold the hands of a child you are holding their trust in your hands okay i've experienced it many times with my son as we've been going through this therapy um well the first especially that first few that first year and i don't and maybe you've noticed in your child if they're angry their hands go like this or they hide their hands okay so we never smack we never smack children's hands we don't smack them whether it's here or there doesn't matter it's so important to them um, and it's extremely hurtful. It's like an emotional, personal hurt if you, if you hurt their hands. When you want to engage with your little one, if they're feeling sad, if you see that they don't want to talk, if, they, if you see that they are feeling a little bit down, then tell them how much you love them. Kiss their hands. Um, put cream on their hands after, after uh, you've bathed them. Tell them how special you are. And try explain to them that we're going to go to school when teacher Marisa says we can go back to school. Okay, you can blame me. I don't mind being the baddie because I know how to fix that later. So don't worry, you can blame me. So tell, you, can, you can tell them that we're just waiting for teacher Marisa to tell us when we can go back. Okay, if you feel your little one is angry, same thing. If they don't want to give you their hands, ask for permission. We have to instill in our children from a very small age that their body is their body. Just because you're the adult, it does not give you the right to just do what you want with their body. So even if you mom, dad, granny, auntie, I don't care, you, you will ask for permission first, please. If they don't want to give you their hands, say, please can mommy hold your hand. If they still don't want to, then say, it's okay. Can I sit next to you? Can we talk? Can we, can we draw a picture? Drawing pictures is it's a very eye-opening um, experience. They can draw the silliest of pictures in their mind or something funny or something cute. But you can tell a lot 
when you examine that picture from the hardness of the pencil from the way it's colored in the colors that they used the drawing of the person the drawing of buildings the drawing of trees the drawing of there's so much you can tell from that and even if you can't interpret it they are interpreting their emotions onto a piece of paper that is their therapy so by allowing them just to be free and paint or draw or you take chalk and go outside and go crazy you are allowing them to express their emotions forget about whatever class lesson your teacher has planned for you if your child is sad that day we switch off the YouTube uh, class we close our workbook and we concentrate on why they are feeling that way not come on it's class time now we have to work if they're going to matric next year then you can be that strict but my our, my babies have been inside their homes for far too long for us to be this strict now there are times to work and there are times that we need to close our workbook and understand that what they are going through is equally real to what we are going through and it is affecting them just as much if not more they just cannot show it as much or express it as much as we can um, another way if you've parents if you've got instruments at home any instrument at all a guitar a flute a xylophone um, a piano a violin any any form of instrument that you might have start teaching them that music has got meaning music can make you feel things i did it with my son at two so it is possible um and yes it took him it took him a while but now he gets to my piano and he will sit down at or my keyboard rather he will sit down at my keyboard and when he's feeling and he mainly only does it when he's sad now before when he was younger he would do it when he's, he was angry and he needed to he would bash down on the keys and I would tell him not too hard you can bash if you want to but not too hard because you can break so he, I would let him bash down because he was expressing that he was angry and that's okay if they want to express that it is not okay however for a child to express their anger by hitting somebody or some or, or, or an animal a human or an animal that is completely unacceptable and every therapist will tell you that child therapist adult therapist doesn't matter it is okay to express your anger but it is not okay at any age for a child to express their anger and be allowed to express their anger on a human or an animal at all not even if it's a smack or a punch or that they bite mom or it is not okay and then you have to be stern and you have to discipline them from any age because that is not okay obviously if they're nine months old it's different please don't discipline my, my babies they're still so small they don't know what they're doing okay <laughs> forgive them <laughs> don't don't punish them but the from two years and up they know what they are doing they are very smart children so now Costa now that he's older he will go to the piano he doesn't know how to play keyboard by the way he will just go to the keyboard when he's sad when he's feeling sad and when he's missing his friends he will go to the keyboard and he'll just play very soft music and then he'll like put a song to it and he'll make up his own lyrics and then he's expressing himself in a in a in a positive way you know in a it's a negative it's a it's a bad it's a sad feeling but it's expressed in a positive way because he's expressing it and he's letting it out but in a way that doesn't hurt anyone okay so try and try and allow your children to express themselves in positive ways whether it's a negative emotion whether it's a sad emotion whether it's a happy emotion it doesn't matter allow them to express themselves and he will my daughter very expressive and will tell me what's what and what's happening in her life and I'm very happy with that as well but also she needs to be able to cope with it so I'm trying to teach her self-regulation so when she gets overly upset she doesn't know how to bring herself down and maybe your little one is like that that is very common and very age-appropriate up until the age of four years old 
um, for children to have problems with self-regulation. So if they get very upset, if they get themselves too worked up and they don't know how to calm themselves down, that can happen with sensory sensitive children. If your little one had a, quite a difficult uh, pregnancy um, or you were very sick during the pregnancy um, or you had an early, if they were prem babies, but if you feel that your little one does it battles to self-regulate, that is a skill that they need to learn. And you can start teaching them even from small. That's from, from my little ones, my two-year-olds, a dummy or a, a blankie might help. That sometimes calms them down, soothes them, relaxes them without throwing a tantrum um, because that is a negative way of expressing your emotions. So we have to teach our children how to self-regulate as well because going back to school is going to be a whole new adventure that they have to go through and it might be a little bit unbalanced for them and it might cause a, a lot of different mixed emotions. Play is the best therapy for your child. Don't now start you see your child get sad or lethargic or lack of appetite and phone a play therapist. You are the best play therapist your child could get. One of the best ways to allow them to, to express themselves is by allowing them to be bored. It is wonderful. Switch off all electronics and watch them. They will play with their toys every now and then. Maybe play with a sibling or read a book or something. But then eventually they're going to get bored. Ignore them. You go do your work. Children should not be entertained the whole day. Yes, they should be monitored, supervised, made sure that they don't kill something or break something, um, and obviously fed. <laughs> but they should not be entertained the whole day. They are only going to learn that they can control you. So let them be bored. Let them like, oh, mom, I'm bored. <gasps> Fantastic! That's such good news! Go play. Just so they have a bit of structure as well and they don't feel like you've abandoned them, you can say, from this time to this time, or put a timer on your phone. When this phone beeps, then we can go do exercise outside. Or then mom will sit with you and color. Or we can go paint. Or we can, then you can do, but for at least 45 to 60 minutes, your child should be able to just be without you telling them how to play, what to play, when to play. They should have time to just be, just be. And that is the importance of free play. And that's why we have free play many times and quite often during our daily program at school. But I encourage all of you um, to just stay put. The 27th of July is just a few weeks away. It's just this much away and we are so eager and so willing to just welcome them back with open arms well as open distance arms as we possibly can and I want to thank you all from the bottom of my heart for all your patience with me the school with your cooperation with your support the messages I have been receiving from parents has brought me to tears just thinking about it beautiful beautiful i am beyond blessed with everyone and i am i'm so 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 grateful for each and every single one of you your teachers cannot wait to see their children the teachers cannot wait and you should see their faces when it's drive in day for you to fetch your packs and i go call them and say your so and so is at the it has just arrived how they f they sprint and some of them even bawl into tears after see they come back inside after seeing your little ones and they just cry. You have no idea how much we miss your children. No idea. I thank you all and I wish you all the very best. God bless.